Welcome back, best ever listeners, to another episode of Passive Investor Tips. I'm your host, Travis Watts. Got an exciting episode for you today. What we're talking about is the value add mindset and how to maximize profit. Disclaimers, as always, never financial advice. Not going to tell you or anyone else what to do with your money. Please always seek licensed financial advice. With that top of mind, I speak a lot about value add real estate here on the channel. I'm sure you've heard it in multiple forms and multiple ways by multiple people. And it's true. Nearly every single deal that I've invested in in the real estate space over the last 15 years has had a value add component. So what is value add? In my simple definition, it means I'm buying or investing in something that is older, outdated, maybe it's got some problems, and I'm gonna come in and fix those problems. I'm gonna turn it around, and in turn, it becomes more valuable or more desirable to the next buyer. So it's simply a way to help maximize the profit along your journey. So in the case of real estate, very simple. You buy an older property, it's lacking you know, modern appliances and technology and color schemes and carpet and everything else. So you just come in and you fix those areas and you make it more modernized and nicer and newer and more accommodating to somebody else. And that increases the desirability. And so someone is likely going to pay more than you paid for the same property because of the condition that it's in. And I give a lot of credit to my parents for instilling a value add mentality in me from a young age. Now, keep in mind, my parents were not real estate investors. Uh, these conversations had nothing to do with real estate. They were not wealthy individuals. What they were coming from was this perspective of how do we cut the budget? How do we save money? Now, my perspective through most of my journey has been quite the opposite. It's been how do I maximize profit as an investor, but you can use value add in either sense, whether you're wanting to reduce expenses or maximize profit. And what I always like to say is there's a limit to how much you can save, but your earning potential is unlimited. So there's many examples where you can apply value add as a mindset or a philosophy in your own journey that has nothing to do with real estate. And I'll share with you a few of these stories and examples to help paint the picture. Number one, I'll start with cars or vehicles. It can be very difficult, in fact, nearly impossible, if you go out and buy a brand new car and you pay market pricing for that, that car to turn around in three or four years and sell the car for a profit or a higher price than what you paid. So one example of using value add as a strategy on cars was in 2020 during the pandemic. My wife and I bought a car. And believe it or not, we actually bought it from a small dealership, which I hardly ever do. But in this case, it made sense because the price was negotiable. We bought this car for $6,500. We kept it about two years. We put approximately 20,000 miles on this car before we sold it. And we ended up selling it for $8,000, which was a profit. Now, additionally, we rented out that vehicle for a period of time to people through using an app service where they could use our car for short-term needs and things like that within our own community, which was kind of an added bonus. That probably added $2,500 to the total deal. So how is this possible? Well, number one, it was possible because we bought a used car and we were able to negotiate the price down because the vehicle wasn't in tip top shape. It had terrible photos, it was dirty, it had battery problems, it had a bunch of stuff going on, but nothing of those issues was major. They were all minor. It was just that the dealer didn't have the time to turn the car around, so that became our opportunity. So number two, we fixed up the car, we detailed it, we vacuumed it, we changed out the battery, we changed out the headlights, we, we made all the issues go away. And number three, when we went to sell the car, we didn't go trade it in at a dealership and get ripped off, we sold it private party. And not only that, but again, we kept it in tip top shape. We took awesome professional photos. We wrote uh, a really personalized description of the vehicle. And so that helped us offload it when it was time to sell. 
Number two, something I really don't do anymore, but I did for many years growing up and when money was tight is I would look for used clothing through different outlets, whether it was on eBay or whether it was from Goodwill or, you know, my parents used to garage sale and I would find extreme discounts on clothing, high quality clothing that's in good shape, that's a brand name. And what I learned is I could buy this clothing and wash it and then I could wear it for a year or two. And when I was finished with it, if it was still in good shape because you know I took care of it, I could sell it for the same price or even higher in many cases. So if you think about it, let's say you're at the mall or some retail shop and you pass by a jacket and it looks awesome. You have to have it, right? And that jacket's $200. Well, if you buy that jacket, you take it home and you wash it, you wear it a few times, what do you think that jacket's now worth? Maybe. 10 or 20 bucks at best, depending on how you sell it, right? So what if you could be on the other side of that transaction, being the buyer who's paying $20 for that $200 jacket? And number three is furniture for your primary residence or even your rental properties or anything else for that matter. I'll never forget the story of the first house that I bought and how I furnished it. Everything was negotiated, everything was used, and I did a lot of elbow grease to make that house look pretty. One of the big ticket items I was looking for was two leather couches to help fill out the living room. I knew I wanted leather, I knew I wanted brown, and I knew I wanted to buy them used. And I came across, I think it was on Craigslist or whatever existed back then at that point, and there was literally no pictures on this post. It said two brown leather couches and it gave the dimensions. It said, great shape in a storage unit, call this number. So I called the numbers about 45 minutes from where I lived. I went out there and when he opened up the storage unit, there they were covered in dust and grime and dirt. They were nasty. There was cobwebs in there, it was terrible. So he wanted $400 for the couches. I made him a cash offer for 350. He accepted. I bought a $25 leather restoration kit from a furniture store and I went home and I beautified these couches and they turned out amazing. It was basically like having a brand new couch. By the way, I ended up looking those couches up later. They sold originally for about $2,000 a piece. So that initial buyer had paid $4,000 and came all the way down to 350. And I was the recipient of being able to do that. And even better, at the end of this whole venture with this house, I had furnished the whole house with maybe, a I don't know if I had to guess, maybe $5,000 is what I put into all the furnishings in this home. I ended up making a deal with the guy who bought this house from me. And I said, look, I'm willing to leave all the furnishings in here for you if you'll pay $8,000 for it in cash at closing, because they don't like you to tie that up into loans and things like that. So it's kind of like a little uh, side agreement that we had at closing. So I ended up profiting and being able to use all that furniture in my house, not only for free, but I made money and I was able to enjoy it at the same time. So I could go on and on with endless examples about value add and other sectors where I've applied it, but there's really three main takeaways I'll leave you with. And one, it's not what you buy, it's how you buy it. And number two, if you buy used, you can often negotiate and get a great deal. And number three, if you know how to market and sell, you can also maximize your profits when you're done using whatever it is that you bought. So the bottom line is value add strategies are everywhere. You just have to be tuned in on how to find them. And while it's not the most luxurious strategy, it can be a very profitable one. Thank you so much for listening. You're listening to Passive Investor Tips. Feel free to reach out anytime if I can be a mentor or a resource. I'm Travis Watts. You can also search Passive Investor Tips on Instagram and Facebook. Love to connect with you, your friends, your colleagues, anyone that could find value from this content and these topics. Until next time, everyone, have a best ever week, and we'll see you in the next episode.